Monday praise, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday yes, praise. Sir. God is watching us, yes. looking for His saints. He just inhabited the praise of His saints. Amen. Yes. People that will live for Him in the midst of a perverse right. and crook right. nation. Amen. Yes. Amen. God is right there. Yes, Lord. Just a blessing to be in His house tonight. Yes. To turn him some humble praise and thanks. Because yeah. he's taking care of us, taking care of our family, our yeah. loved ones. Yeah. He's been yeah. right there. Yeah. Oh, when you were slumbering and sleeping, Come Come God on. had his protective hand on you. Amen. Yes, you yes, you yes. didn't know what was going on. Amen. You got yeah. upset if you heard a noise, but you didn't realize God was right there watching over you. Yeah. Amen. Thank Through you. the situation, God has been right there. Highs and lows, God has been right there. Yeah. He, he didn't want to say it. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake, nor forsake you. Come on. All you got to do is just trust him. Amen. Amen. Yes. You, you're going to have some hard times, some difficult situations. Amen. Yes. But just keep trusting in God. That was going to try to get you to quit. Mm -hmm. But just keep trusting in God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let us bow our heads for a moment. Our Father and our God. Yes, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for this day. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all that our hearts have felt, all that our ears have heard, Master, all that our eyes have seen. Realize that all good and perfect gifts come from you. And your people, Master, dressed and adorned in your Holy Spirit of yes. nothing else but the best of the best. Amen? Yes, just, just perfect as they can be. Because they accept you, they trust you, they believe in you. Yes. They acknowledge you, Master, above all that are called gods. Okay. Right now, Master, as we stand before your altar, to present your word to your people, Master. Remove anything that's sin far from us. Yeah. Let your will be done. That's all we want, Master, is that your will to be done. That yeah. you hide us behind your altar. Give us a word that will touch someone's heart, that their lives may be changed. That they will not see us, Master, but they will see yes. you. Yes. Anything other than you is not the right foundation, Master. Yes. So we just want to present Jesus to your people. Yes. Through, his, through your holy word, we ask you to teach us, give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Yes. And a better way to seek and to serve you. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, we do praise and thank you. Forever and evermore. Amen. 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 From the Amen. book of Ephesians in its fourth chapter. Ephesians. We're going to sound the trumpet this morning and let God do what he do. Yes. Right. yes. Fourth chapter and we're going to look at a couple of verses. Uh, 26 and 27. Amen. Oh, Amen. 26 and 27. I don't feel like... But it's just from my standpoint, God would have knocked me out if he didn't want me to preach. Come on now. But, but I've already heard the sermon this morning already. Amen? Amen. Say a word now. But it's just repetitious. Uh -huh. Whatever you hear in the word of God oh, is repetitious. Right. So you won't have no excuse. Amen? No. You can't get by him no matter what you do. Right. He got everybody come you come now. in contact with telling you the same, same. thing in the word of God. Amen? Amen. From that Hallelujah. book of Ephesians in its fourth chapter, mm. verse 26 and 27. If everybody there, we have these words. Amen? Amen. Not there, say, hold up. All right? Be ye angry mm. and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Yeah. Neither give place to the devil. My Jesus. Pastor already talked to y'all about the karma right now. Yeah. Something that follows it. Amen? Yeah. When something is following in our lives, mm. we need to know who we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Know who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we study from that point, know who you are, mm. we want to realize that we have to know who we are. You yeah. can see it. Yes, yes, yes. We have to know who we yes, are. Sir. This writer is, is profound. He came on the scene late, amen? Mm -hmm. he, 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 but he was a man after his own heart. 
He went doing about whatever he thought was right to do. And whatever pleased the Pharisees and Sadducees, he worked hard to get the job done. Till one day he got a letter and headed down the, the, the road to Damascus. And God said, hold on, fella. I see you, you're very diligent in what you're doing. Yeah. But you ain't going to make it fight against me. Come on. Come and, on. And, and this boy come off the scene. See, see, I believe that when you meet God, when you have a relationship with God, yes, you have a different mindset. Yeah. The same guy that was crucifying people that professed faith in Jesus Christ has now at this time in our lesson calls himself the prisoner of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He said he was the prisoner of the Lord and now he started begging and pleading with people to walk the way God wants them to walk. Mm -hmm. He said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. God has a purpose for you. God has something for you to do. Right. We think that we make our own choices in life. Mm. But our purpose was set. You know how God operates? Come on. God saved you in Christ before he ever set the foundation of the earth. Yes, sir. Before you ever had a mind to think you were just like that little baby my wife holding, you didn't know nothing but what was wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Before you were ever set, God had planned out your life and your purpose. Yes. yes. And every time you detoured or deviated, God had a message for you. Mm. You had to pay the ultimate price. That's why we got all the scars and the bumps My and the God. bruises in our life. Amen? Yes. Amen. God sent us one direction. We wanted to go another. Yes. God gave us one person. We wanted another. Yes. And we suffered dire consequences. For doing what God mm. didn't want us to do. That's right. But this man in this lesson this morning compared himself as being a prisoner of God. Y'all, mm. y'all know about prisoners, don't yeah. you? Nobody, yeah. nobody really want to be no prisoner. Because when you think of prisoner, Come we on. don't think about it in a positive sense. Come on, that's right. Mm. There's somebody that's not in control of when they get up in the morning, when they go to bed, what they eat. They don't have a decision or choice to make. They just do what they're told, when they're told, mm -hmm. and how they're told to do it. Yes. yes. Now, just, just drop out and tell you that you're a prisoner of God. Stop making up your own Come mind on. and your own rules. Right. Don't make up your own mind and your own rules because you become a disobedient prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. And then they put you in the hole. I, I, I had an instance uh, with one of my great nephews, and uh, his mother called, and she said that, that, that her son was in prison, and he spent 21 days in the hole, I believe she said, mm -hmm. which is a long time to be mm -hmm. kept apart from solitary. any life. There you go, solitary stuff. Yeah. Just kept, just blocked away. And then I'm, I'm, I ain't never been locked up in the system. Yeah. So so I saw a bunch of officers. I think I was in Jackson somewhere. And I said, hey, hey, man, come here. Let me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> I want to know what, what, is, it that, up, yes, what is it that keep, keep you in solitary confinement or in the hole? And, I, and then when I realized, he said, you've done something that you was mm. not supposed to do. Mm. You have been disobedient, misguided, or just doing whatever you want to do. That oh, that's what keep me in the situation come I'm on, in. Come on. Is that I'm misguided and doing whatever I want to do. Uh, yeah. You, you know what the scriptures say. You seek the Lord. Mm. And then we use it all the time. Some of us use it every day. <laughs> Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Yeah. But this writer had, had worked hard in doing what he was doing, and now he's comparing himself to a prisoner of God for the very thing that he tried to yeah. destroy. Yeah. But now I tell people all the time when I was a young man, I thought I was the best of the best sinner. Mm -hmm. Can't ain't nobody gonna beat me doing nothing out there. I'm, I'm a bad boy. Yeah. But when I start studying scripture, mm -hmm. 
And this man started talking about, say, look, say he, 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 he was charged with some stuff, and all he did was stand there and witness it and held the coach of the folks that were doing it then. Come on. And he said, look, say, I ain't just no sinner. I ain't just no regular sinner. Mm -hmm. Somebody that did what they want to do. He said, I went about to destroy the church and tell people that was trying to serve God. Yeah. Oh, we may not think of it like that, amen? amen. But when you got a, a service going on at the church and your own demeanor start coming out and popping off the wall, putting spots on the floor, mm. then you destroying the, the purpose of God. Yes. <laughs> so you have to have yourself in God's, the young lady said this morning, you should be in God's spirit. You should always think about what God is doing and how he's working it out in your life. What your job is, what you're supposed to be doing. God has called you for a purpose and set you aside to do a work for him, amen? Right. And, then, then, and then look, just lose some of that high-minded stuff. Mm. Just lose some of that high-minded stuff. He said, with all loneliness and meekness and low suffering, for bearing one another, y'all had it this morning already, in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why are you putting up with somebody that you know not right? Because you love them. Yeah. And you know if you don't put up with them, you're going to push them off the edge. They're going off the cliff. Mm -hmm. But with all lowness and meekness and long suffering, yes. give a person every opportunity every. That, 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 that you can give them to confine themselves to the will of God. It's just not an easy task with because we've been humanized so long. Come on, come on. We've been humanized so long, we've been despiritualized for all that time we've been being humanized. Mm -hmm. That's right. God wants us to be spiritual beings. Don't mm -hmm. what, whatever's gonna satisfy this flesh is carnal. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. It's carnal. But when we find ourselves laying aside every weight in the sin that so easily beset us, running this race with patience yes. and long suffering, yes. looking unto Jesus who, look, uh -huh. yes, sir. he already gave you what the conclusion is. Yes, sir. Why are you stressing over the test and Come you got on. all the answers? Come on, Come on Yes, sir. How you falling short? Ooh. How you missing the mark? You got the answer. She's in your hand. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. You know the power of the adversary is overwhelming. Because when you when you got the answer sheet, and you won't even look at the answer and pick the right answer. Come on, preacher. Yes, sir. Got the answer sheet. Got them right there before you. Woo! And just following that same old evil spirit that you grew up with, that you saw all your life, just walking in the wrong way, doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Just let God mm. go slack in your life. Mm. And you, know, you can see it. Can't you see it in your children? Mm. Can you see the demeanor in your children when the adversary is messing with your children? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They can be so lax in everything that you tell them to do, everywhere you tell them to go, every move they make, they lax. Mm. And then you're going to lax them because you, you let them get by with it. Instead of pressing them because one day they're going to have to stand without a mama and daddy to tell them every move to make, every step to That's take. Right. That's right. Yeah. But the writer's pushing us pushing us to stay within the boundaries of unity. It's easy to be divided. It's easy to go, that's why you had to, you had to let it testify about all the rooms in the house. Mm -hmm. You got rooms in your house, stay in the room where somebody's at. Don't go in the room by yourself. Don't be divided. You can stand unless you're the only somebody in the house. Then you walk around the house talking to somebody that was in the house. But don't just go off to yourself and feel like you're all right. You're not all right. My God. If you got another living body that Christ died for in the next 
room and you're in the other room segregating yourself. Or you might be even sleeping in the bed with them. Segregating yourself. My God. My God. You're not all right. God has pointed a way for us to keep the unity in the body of Christ through the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 And the best way to do you is make you lose your hope. You, you ever go black sometime? Mm. My Lord. Well, you just don't see love for nobody. Mm. You just don't have no feelings for nobody. You just lose all of your hope. Mm. Unaware. My God. That you lost all of your hope. You're going to get up in the morning, I guarantee you. Go to that job. Mm. You're going to go through all of the stuff that you're going to encounter that's not necessary. And you're going to get up and go the next day and go back through that same stuff again because your hope and desire is in your paycheck or your payday. So when you're hoping in Jesus Christ, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't see, the, see the ripples. You know what Peter did when he got on the water to walk to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Scripture told you plain. Yeah. Say so he looked at the wind and he looked at the water. He took his eyes off Jesus. And he started to sink. When you take your eyes off the Lord, you already sinking. Mm -hmm. And when you don't know you're sinking, you put it whoever come in contact with you in the same muck and mire that you in. Yes, yes. The writer is pushed. He was down. Mm -hmm. Pitched eternally lost. But when he had the opportunity, when God stopped him like he stopped you and me on the road, he said, look, it's hard for you to keep against keep the prick. The prick. Yeah. Right. How you gonna fight against God? You know the difference between good and evil, right and wrong. Yes. When you choose evil, you fight against God. When you choose wrong, you fight against God. You're not gonna win. That's right. That's what you want. Everybody, we think we can lie and win. You can't. How you gonna be when a lie is nowhere near God? It's impossible for him to lie. How are you going to lie and be a part of him? Because somebody don't, some, you think somebody don't know, but you lose your concept with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. God has given us what we need to be productive, prosperous, yes. Christian and believers in him. Amen? He's given it to us. He laid it out for us. Yes. And we get caught up in what we see that's destroying other men and women every day. Yes. When we walk together, when we talk together, we represent God. We, you know, when we see it, and if we see it, we realize that there's only one God, amen? amen? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. It's only one. So when something tells you that it's something other than what you think it is, mm -hmm. shake yourself, slap yourself, beat yourself. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's it. That's it. Where, where, where is that division? And, and, and when the scripture laid it out, it laid it out just like your, 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 your mortal body. If your finger fall off your hand, it ain't going to matter. If your hand fall off your arm, it's not going to matter. If your head fall off your shoulders, it's not going to matter. That's how important it is to have unity one with another. Yes, yes. If your body parts are being lost, you you are getting an uproar. That's right. Huh? I hear my I hear my wife say her whole hand hurt in the face, frown up at the same time. <laughs> because she's in unity with her body, That's amen? Right, That's right. And I know a lot of times so we'll tell one another we're hurting it, and we say, Well, I can't do nothing about it, but then we'll be silent, which is the wrong thing to do, amen. 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 If we were falling out of right mind, we'd grab them and hold them up real tight and say, Lord, help. All right. 
Give them a way out. Amen. Amen. But he, he's pushing us and pressing us because he has gifted us with so many different gifts. If we use them, if we just use them, you hear what you hear Pastor Bowman say sometimes? We got everything we need in the house. In the house. That's it. And if we communicate it, we would know it. Mm -hmm. If we talk with one another, or we get around here and service over, we'll pat one another and kiss one another and say hi to do this. We won't talk to no one another until the next Bible class or Sunday school or something. Mm -hmm. We have a problem at home we call Rotor Rooter, amen? That's right, got blown in the house. Somebody can help you. Somebody can uh, uh, do something for you, but you don't do it. And then the, the, if you just call on the Lord and let him lead you, because he has given us the gifts to care for one another, because you know what happens when we fall captive to our own selves, our own kernel flesh, we miss so much. That's right. We miss so much. And, and, and when you fall captive to yourself, then you, you might need to take your finger off. What the Bible say? If, 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 if the eye offend thee? Look at that. Huh? Look at that. If your own mind has got you so messed up that you can't love your brother or your sister because of something they said or something they did, you, you need to fix that. You need to fix that. Even when, when you got ready to bring your gift to the altar, the scriptures say, if you, you bring your gift to the altar before the Lord and remember that, that your brother or your sister has an altar against you, he said, leave your gift, go and find your sister and your brother, and be reconciled to them. Then y'all come on back and y'all can put up some true worship. Amen? Amen. In the sight of God. All right. And that's what we do. We work and we live in the sight of God each and every day of our life. And we just have to think that way. If we think that way, then we'll be better believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. But when you believe something, it's not what we take it to be. It's how you act. Mm -hmm. Your actions every day say whether or not you believe, not your mouth. What you actually do determines whether or not you're faithful or not. Amen. I used to hear my daddy when I was a boy. You know, the Bible say, "Hear, hear, oh, you." My daddy would be adamant about it. He say, "If you heard me with that physical ear, make that noise here, and did not change your direction, you ain't heard a word I say." It makes a change. When you hear what the Lord is saying, it changes your actions, your demeanor, your character. It becomes what you do. And I know, I know, I know because I've lived here quite a few years. And I can base it on my experience. And I surely can base it on the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because now you know your experience don't prove true. Y'all had that this morning. Experience don't necessarily prove true. So a lot of times when people are passing you information based on their experience, yeah. it might cause you to wind up in hell. That's right. Because you live by faith. Amen, amen. And That's faith right. that is seen That's right. is not faith at all. When you trust God and believe in God for who he is, amen? Amen. We find ourselves pressing. When anybody ever been angry before? Yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. I'm talking about pressed out of mess, upset, can't quit talking. Why you can't quit talking? Because you 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 adamant to sin. You keep running your mouth, you're going to be able to say some things you ought not say. Let's look at Psalm 4 and 4. No, you, ought, you, ought be able, you ought to be able to angry and say, ooh, we. Huh? And that's it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand in awe. 
and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. That's what God said. The writer David say, stand, huh? In all. Which simply means, you know, it's just amazing. I didn't believe she could act like that. Amen. Or he could act like that. Mm -hmm. I thought she was a Christian. He was a Christian. Hmm. You stand there with him. And don't open your mouth. You ever did it before? Uh -huh. Just stand there saying, wow. I, I just did I just I just didn't think that that would come from them. Amen? Amen. Huh? But don't you fall into that trap. That's right. That's what it's for. People are pushing and pulling and tugging to get you off base. Yes. But if you stand there and believe in God and trust in God for who he is, amen. If you just stand there. Instead of talking to them, talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, have mercy. I used to hear my mama when the folk, stuff going on in the neighborhood. She wouldn't do nothing. I said, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Yes. Man, them folk be out there cussing one another and saying whatever they had to say to one another with sticks and balls and bricks in their hand. And all she said was, Lord. Yeah, why are you in here? You, you, you just didn't let them get by with too much. Hmm. But she was standing in awe. I'm amazed that she was sitting at my table eating late and week. Mm -hmm. But today, you want to cut my head off. Yes. The writer's profoundly pushing us yes. to look for and to do better in our Christian walk of life. Amen. Pressing to do better. Let's look at Romans 3. Romans 3, verses 21 through 25. Amen? Amen. See, see, when you know that you're justified in Jesus Christ now, you don't have to fight. There's only one justifier. Who is that? And we get caught up in other folks. In other things, in other reasons. Ready? Everybody there? Amen. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. What do it mean? It's been made known to you, amen? Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Everything you read about God is letting you know that you have already been justified in Jesus Christ. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Even the law and the prophecies has been pointed out. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. It don't make no difference whether you White, black, woman, girl, or boy, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you justified. And they, 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 they had it tied up in the Jews and Gentiles style. But it don't make no difference in, in, that, in, that, in the point. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even little Michael. You get it? It's not a practice sin. But you were trapped in the bondage of Adam and you were freed from that bondage through Jesus Christ. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You've been saved from all the things that you're wallowing in, that you're laying in, sleeping in, talking in, lying in. You've been saved from that. You don't have to take part in that. You, you tell somebody, 
tell the truth and shame the devil. If you tell the truth, you know, the devil ain't going to stay around too long. He's going to get away from that. Scripture says that what? If we resist him, he'll flee. He'll flee. But as long as I keep laying down his message, he's right there. Whom God has set forth to be the appropriation through faith, through faith, no matter how rough it gets, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how bad it looks, you keep your faith in God. Amen. In his blood to declare the righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. God has laid it out for us. He knows all about it. He approved your redemption in Christ Jesus. Then you have to walk like a redeemed. Pastor Ben Hall telling you this morning. Your life has been changed. You are not the same old person that you were. If you bought a new car and it came back to your house looking like your old car, you wouldn't want to pay the note. Matter of fact, you wouldn't pay the note. You know, I understand a whole lot of stuff my mama told me when I was a boy when she said, don't you get off that mama's bench. I don't see no change in you. <laughs> There's certain things that God do to you that has nothing to do with animosity, strife, and malice, and God. All that stuff get out of the way when Jesus take over. When he take over. Let's look at James 4, 5 and 10. Amen? We ready? Amen. Do ye think that the scriptures say in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? You, you, you need to know who you are. Know what you made up of. And if you know who you made up of, you got a better chance of conquering that, that spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resists. What kind of people? Proud. God resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. The flesh don't want to be humble. It don't want to get down. It don't want to bow down. Trip to say, submit yourselves to God. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Can you see, can you, can you see that, that connection? What about it? Just, just, just reverse it for a minute in your mind. If I don't draw nigh to God, what are you going to do? He ain't going to draw nigh to me. Then, then you find yourself 70 years old and ain't, don't know nothing about right. Don't know nothing about loving nobody. Don't know nothing about caring for nobody. You don't know nothing about giving to nobody. God is pushing us to a better way and a better life. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You can't have it both ways. You're dealing with God. You can't have it both ways. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to, to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of God and he will lift you up. Do y'all remember the, the conversation that Israel was having with God when they were in, in, in prison in Egypt? 
You remember the reply God came back to them with? I have heard your cry. I have heard your groaning. And when you cry to him in sincerity, he will lift you up. He will bring you out. Let's go back to Ephesians 16. As we get ready to go to our seats, amen? amen. We get ready to go to our seats. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna push, push, and push till we get to where we're trying to go, amen? All right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Don't, don't worry about being strong in the world. Don't worry about what your girlfriend going to say because you look weak, because you were humble, because you were meek, because you were kind, because you were loving. Don't worry about what the folks going to say about that. Don't worry about that. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Take hold of something that's going to last. Put on the whole, y'all have had this this morning. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He coming. And 10 to 1, he'll be here before you get out this door. And 9 to 1, he ain't in, in, inside of you right now trying to conflict some kind of way. He's always present doing what it is to accomplish his purpose. And that is to devour whoever he can. Amen? Amen. Realize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Stop fighting one another. Stop fighting and devouring one another. Because the scriptures say, if we bite and devour one another, What's going to happen? We will be consumed one of another. In other words, if I'm going to hold you from going where God wants you to go, you're going to hold me from God want, where God wants me to go, and neither one of us is going to make our goal. Right. None of us going to We will be consumed one of another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day is here, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawns girded about with truth. Just tell the truth. If it hurts you, tell the truth. If it gets you killed, tell the truth. You got Jesus killed, didn't it? Huh? Stand therefore having your lawns girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet, your, your, your feet, you're going to take you somewhere you don't need to go. So shower them with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Stop believing in what you see and what you know and just trust God. And when you trust God, taking the, the shield of faith, Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You don't get caught up. What, what, what was it to say? What, what we had in, the, in Bible class? By walking in the council of the ungodly? Or standing in the way of sinners? Or sitting in the seat of the scornful? You don't have to follow the instructions. Amen? Amen. And taking the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Don't just lay it down. Y'all got cell phone now. Y'all had to walk around talking your Bible around. Put that Bible app on your phone. And when you look at some of them games or playing some of them jokes on the thing or crossword puzzles on your phone, be reading the Word of God. Amen. It's going to be what's going to sustain you when the devil come and try to trap you or tie you up. You're going to have to have something. You know what Jesus did? Every time when he was out there hungry for the 40 days, the devil took him up and tempted him. He quoted scripture to him. It is written. Devil quoted scripture back. So what? Your adversary already know 
what your victory is. But do you know it? Do you have faith in it? Do you believe in it? Is this going to be what's going to help you for, for when you find yourself, when you find yourself with the word of God, then you're going to find yourself woo, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You're going to be wanting your brothers and sisters to succeed in whatever they're doing and wherever they're going. Amen? Amen. And then, then look what the writer said. And when, I, when I was going over this left, I said, that would be good for me too. That y'all pray for me. Amen? Amen? Paul told him to pray for him, huh? Yes, Lord. That utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly. Even if they spear me or shoot me or kill me. You know how Paul talked about it. He said, look, I've been let down in the basket twice on the wall. I've been beaten. I've been all the things that done. Or somebody probably would beat us if we carried the word of God like he carried it. Amen? Amen. If we went out there and just compelled men and women to see God for who he is. Amen? Amen. Then they beat you down. For me that others may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of God. For which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And I ought to be able to tell men and women about Jesus Christ. Sometimes my men, my, my car, they, get, they, they, get, they know a whole lot more about football and basketball and and, and, and all that stuff that I know, you know. But I just tell them about Jesus. And I don't get no pushback. But if I say something about the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers, I get some pushback. <laughs> huh? Because that's what they know. So let us try to wash the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. Yes. You can do it. You can do it. It's, it when, you, when you look around your house, you go home and just look. And those, especially the older you that have little children, just look at them. And just see the glory of God dripping off of them. The man played a joke on his son the other day, told him to go do something that day. What did he need to do? And then they sat there and laughed. And laughed. I look, I said, little boy got more sense than all y'all. Because he was following the instruction of his parent. And if the parent was dumb enough to tell him to go do something that wasn't even there to do, that's on you, bro. Then they all just look real crazy like, you know. But don't, don't play games with somebody that you, if you know something that somebody else don't know, inform them of how it goes. Don't just go around thinking you're smarter and better than everybody else because you know something that they don't know. Right. Teach them. Tell them. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us not to minister questions. If I got something to tell you about Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you what does say the Lord to the best of my ability. And tell you profoundly that if you, you don't you accept it, or you reject it, that's on you. Because it's not me. I'm still going to hug you and kiss you and love you the same. Y'all heard that this morning too. Pastor said that this morning. But let us think about it. Because we have so much enlisted in our warfare that Christ has did so much to give us the right to be able to go to the throne of God. He suffered, he died on Calvary's hill for each and every one of us, no matter how great or how small. Christ died for us and expects us to love one another no matter how great or how small we consider one to be, to love them with our whole heart. He did it when they were crucified on the cross. He did it, and he testified that no man take my life, but I lay it down for you and I. 
He laid it down. When the girls showed up at the, at, at, at the tomb that morning and seen the stone was gone, they looked up and they thought somebody was the guard. I'm going to stick a pen right there. When you're looking at Jesus, who do you think you're looking at? Are you presuming him to be a man or a woman or a girl or a boy? You ought to be able to see past a man, a woman, or a girl, or a boy and see Jesus in them. But the girls got there and they say, hey, just tell us where you laid him. Tell us where you put him. Where you put our Lord, just tell him. And Jesus say, Mary, and the eyes come open. Someday your eyes going to come open. You don't, want it. you don't want it to be too late. You need to recognize Jesus right now. You need to know who he is. Know who you are most of all. Where God can use you in his kingdom. Where he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for you and I right now. Trust in the Lord. And lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Thank you. Amen. 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 Come on.